All right, good afternoon, folks. We wanted to kind of get this show started here so we can all get on our bikes and take a ride on the new trail. So uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, we're here today for the ribbon cutting of the off-road trail here at Terrapin Nature Park. And this has been a, uh, an effort between the uh, Mid-Atlantic Off-Road Enthusiast in Queen Anne's County. We're very, very proud to have this open here in, uh, in Terrapin Nature Park, and it's exciting for all of us, and we're looking forward to additional phases to this uh, roughly 1.8 mile loop that we have here in the initial phase. So um, I'm Todd Mon, the County Administrator. I'm uh, sort of pinch hitting today for our Director of Parks and Recreation, Steve Chanley. He had another engagement today that he had to attend to, so uh, I am here today with you. So we have a few speakers and then uh, some acknowledgments, and then we will uh, take a ride on the trail and cut the ribbon. So first, I want to introduce our um, Chief of Parks and Resource Planner, uh, Nancy Scazzari, and she's going to give us a little background uh, about the, the project here. So Nancy, come on up. Good afternoon and welcome to Queen Anne's County's latest trail segment, the off-road trail here at Terrapin Nature Park. Um, if, if you don't know it, Terrapin Nature Park is 269 acres protected in perpetuity and it's for the preservation of sensitive lands, critical areas, forest, meadow, habitat for hundreds of species of flora and fauna. It's a lot more than just the sandy stretch of beach that we all know. And if you haven't had an opportunity to explore it, please do so um, sometime soon. Um, we first met Steve Pringle when he came into our office full of energy and excitement and hell-bent on getting something done for off-road cycling. Um, that energy was super contagious. And uh, within a couple of days, I handed Steve a layout for this trail and I think two days later he called me from somewhere in the woods with his hand held GPS saying uh, where do I go from here kind of thing so it, he was really excited about getting this going and we were too he kept us hopping and um, the what we asked from them was uh, from Steve Shelley Jason all of you student volunteers all the more volunteers was um, attention and respect to the environment, stewardship of the environment. And they promised that um, and they delivered. Uh, Steve, Jason, some of the volunteers even went so far as to um, brave a crazy Saturday morning on Ken Island, hostage situation on Route 50, flat tires, broken equipment, and helped me plant 400 tree whips down Blue Heron. Steve and Jason stayed on with me that afternoon and I got to take them for a ride of 300 acres in what ended up being uh, tornado conditions. So that was really fun. And, um, and, and I knew then that we had a really good partnership going. So uh, this project has not been without obstacles um, as, as most projects um, happen that way. And uh, we worked together, all of us together, and all of you many, many hours out here getting this trail built. Uh, we'd like to thank, I don't think he's here today, but our local resident and MDE specialist, Chris Pajak with Maryland Department of the Environment. Chris was great, really patient with us and worked closely with us. We literally um, built trails, built bridges, and uh, in doing so, built partnerships and friendships that I think will last for a long time, keep this trail viable for everybody to use for years to come. So I welcome everybody and hope everybody gets to ride the trail or walk it today and, and really enjoys it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Nancy. Next, we have uh, a couple of our county commissioners here. I know Commissioner Phil Dumanel and Commissioner Steve Wilson. Would you like to make a few remarks, uh, commissioners? Phil, come on. So for some of you, it's no surprise that Steve Pringle can be relentless. Um, and uh, he uh, had reached out to me shortly after the election, clear back in 2018. Uh, to bring awareness to the need for uh, a trails over here that the uh, cycling team, which I didn't even realize Ken Allen had a high school cycling team. Um, and, and at that point, uh, I'll take credit for saying the gal that you need to speak to is um, Nancy and, um, and the two of them work collaboratively together to bring us to where we are here today. Um, I think one of the hiccups that Nancy was referring to um, is just when you're dealing with, you know, Mother Nature and the environment, you have to be sure that, that you're uh, good stewards of it. And, and I think that the group did a great job. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I brought my bike. I'm getting ready to, to ride the trail. Um, just a couple things that um, I think are important about this project. 
Um, and that is the, the combination of recreation and tourism um, that a project like this brings to the county. And, you know, we're always looking for the tur tourist dollars um, and the recognition that uh, I believe the, the Queen Anne's County deserves and what we have to offer here. So, um, uh, and then it, just again to reiterate the commitment to the environment. Um, hats off and kudos to the Moore crew who worked diligently um, to make this happen and bring us here today. And I, I for one, am excited about it and look forward to it. Um, and when the Kent Island High School cycling team comes up with new jerseys, I'd like one. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Steve, okay. And just recognize uh, Commissioner Steve Wilson here in the front with the uh, red hat on, so. <clears throat> okay, next we wanna hear from the Director of Maryland Interscholastic Cycling, John Posner. Is John here? Yep, here he comes, all right. He looks like he's ready to ride today too, so good. All right, John. Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, uh, what a beautiful afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for the opportunity to address you here. Um, my name is John Posner, and I'm one of the co-directors for this Maryland Interscholastic Cycling League. Uh, if you haven't heard of us, uh, I hope you'll um, look around and check us out a little bit. But we, uh, we basically endeavor to build better humans through the sport of mountain biking, and I think we're starting to do that here. Um, our organization is just four years old. We got started in 2018, and we've got almost 1,000 student athletes and coaches in the league this year. Uh, so really pretty strong growth. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that uh, mountain biking as a sport, it, it's a little bit misnamed. You don't really need to have mountains, so you're going to be fine here in Queen Anne's County. Uh, you just need some friends and some bikes and not a road in front of you. So this trail is the perfect thing to, uh, to be a springboard to really get this sport um, flying here. Uh, I met Steve Pringle actually when I took on the project of starting this league for Maryland. Um, he and Shelly, in fact I say Steve Pringle, really we should all just be saying Team Pringle um, because they are really uh, quite a team. Um, but Steve and Shelly were at the very first interest meeting that we did uh, as, as uh, launching this project. Um, it's fair to say that they were there at the very, very beginning, before there was even a ground floor, and they've maintained a, a huge presence in the league ever since then. Um, they've launched two teams and, and seen them through tremendous growth, including uh, the first ever um, high school mountain bike team officially in the state of Maryland. Uh, there are several now, and we know there will be more, but it wouldn't happen without them breaking the ground on that. Um, so yes, yeah, teams and growing them is just just one of the many feathers in their caps uh, for for all the love they've shown to the sport. Um, I, I heard somebody mention earlier uh, in their remarks um, building bridges, building friendships, and building partnerships, and we think that's one of the most important things that this sport does uh, for all of the communities that um, that it touches and all the communities that it hasn't yet touched and connected. But it really is a, a, a tremendous. Um, a tremendous accelerator of, of developing community. Um, so uh, the last thing I just want to mention is that there's one piece of this project, I don't know if it's been addressed yet. Um, when I got off of uh, 50 to come over here, I saw a sign pointing me towards Kent Island Attractions, but it, it, that arrow was to the right. I think there's going to need to be an arrow to the left now to get people to this Kent Island Attraction as well. Um, so thanks so much to the Pringles and to everybody here. Really appreciate this. Thanks, John. I just met uh, uh, the better half of uh, Steve Pringle today, so that's great. I'm glad they're a team, and we appreciate all the work that they've uh, put forth on this project. So next we want to hear from the uh, Mid-Atlantic Off-Road Enthusiast uh, President, Edwin Rodriguez. Ernie? I'm sorry. It says Edwin. I'm sorry about that. My apologies. Okay. So... Ernest Rodriguez, but everybody knows me as Ernie. So thank you so much for the partnership, for giving us access, and to be able to complete some of our mission, which is getting kids on bikes. Another part of our mission, trails close to home. And then the biggest part, enabling volunteers like the Pringles, like our vast army of volunteers all over the state, 
to be able to facilitate building those programs to get the kids on bikes and get them having fun, giving them alternative, uh, instead of just playing video games or, you know, getting stuck in front of a television, now they have social groups that they can participate in, that they can learn from, and like John said, that they can grow life with. So, Steve, thank you for the great job that you've done here. Moore is so happy to be able to support you and so happy to be able to enable groups like you. Thank you. Well, without further ado, we're going to hear from the world famous Steve Pringle, our trail liaison here today. So come on up, Steve. I tell you, you want to talk about a good group of volunteers. Look around at the red shirts um, and give each and every one of them a pat on the back. That's where your sweat equity's at. Um, and it's it, it, someone mentioned child labor. No, they do it willingly. Um, but uh, every everything's pretty much been said, and I'm I'm humbled and honored um, to be standing in front of you today if, to finally have this thing open. So uh, what I'd like to do is just take a, take a moment to recognize a few a uh, few others. My name's got mentioned a lot here today. All I've done is made, made the noise and made some promises wondering how in the heck am I gonna deliver on this? Um, and then I called for community help and community volunteers and um, I'm happy to say that to, to date, we've had over 65 volunteers show up uh, to build this trail and we've put in 560 hours of work uh, to get this trail to this point. And, and I supervised most of it. I did a little bit of work, but uh, <laughs> um, just want to acknowledge a few other folks that are here today. Um, uh, Sean Kenya, where are you at? Raise a hand. Uh, high school principal. Um, so we're so grateful to the high school for allowing us to have the bike team. Um, we now have a good place to practice, not only for the bike team, for the cross country team as well. And uh, your, your support and, and all of that, uh, for the kids has been tremendous, so thank you, Sean. Um, as well as Dan Harding, who's the athletic director that couldn't make it here tonight. Um, he's putting out fire someplace. Um, also from the high school, uh, Bill Hazy. Did Bill make it tonight? He must have got caught up. So Bill Hazy um, helps run the National Honor Society and the Environmental Club. And Bill heard about this project and he wanted to be a part of it. He said, how can I help? Um, so I'm happy to say um, that as of this week, um, this trail, system is now recognized as a um, service learning project for the students, um, which is huge. Um, and, and the environmental club has taken some interest as well uh, to, to get out here and help us, uh, you know, uh, keep the environment uh, protected and keep the environment safe. So we'll have a lot of eyes, a lot of eyes on what we're doing out here. And, and, uh, and that's a good thing. Um, we have several Boy Scout troops here representing tonight. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, troop number 1631, troop 495, 278, and troop 496. Um, and I want to thank them tremendously for the help that they've given us as well. Um, one of one of the work days that I was not able to attend um, last minute, I, I had to bail, um, was a day when it was um, uh, uh, scouts only. It was a scouts only day. And they came out here and picked up trash. And I don't know what's happened to this property over the last 25, 50 years, but there was a lot of trash out there. Um, I bet you won't see a single piece of it today when you're out there. These guys did an amazing job getting out there in truckloads, truckloads worth of, worth of trash. So thank you very much to the scouts uh, for, for your support and helping out as well. Um, some of the hiccups. <laughs> Really, I, I didn't see a lot of hiccups. There were there were a lot of a uh, lot of I's that need to be dotted, a lot of T's that need to be crossed. I no way could have done that uh, by myself. Um, we needed to do a wetlands delineation, as you know, we're how close to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, everywhere in Kent Island, where there's reasonable place for us to be able to build trails, is going to have wetlands, and we have to uh, be aware of that and, and protect those environments. Um, 
the last wetlands mapping that was done here was from the early 1970s. Um, so we were told we should do another one. And uh, I reached out, didn't know what to do. Um, Nancy guided me a little bit and I reached out to uh, Davis Environmental Consulting. Um, they're out of Queen Anne's County. The family's been here, been in business for generations. And um, that project was gonna be very costly. And when they saw the amount of kids that were coming out and parents and, and scout troops um, and the community involvement, um, they graciously um, delineated this entire property for us uh, free of charge. So thank you to Davis Environmental Group. Um, we tried real hard not to take out a single tree. Um, it's been tough, but, but it's been, been manageable. There are some dangerous trees out there. There are some, some trees that are dead um, that are uh, in danger of falling, um, and we need to address those so no one gets hurt. Again, another very costly uh, project. So Environmental Tree Service, one of our, another locally owned company, um, has volunteered to come out and assess those trees and instead of cutting them down, they're gonna bring machines out where they can top them off you know, pretty tall and leave the majority of the trees uh, to continue that habitat. So big thanks to uh, Economy Tree Service as well. Um, Ace Hardware, they don't want a lot of attention, but I tell you, I've, I've gone to Ace Hardware. I walked in one day, I said, how many rakes do you have? I want them all. And, uh, uh, one of the one of the guys noticed I had a mask on I had a bicycle on it and we got to talk and he was a cyclist one of the regional managers heard about what we were doing didn't charge me a penny for the rakes the shovels and the things that we bought so great community that we live in um, the next project that you'll see us undertaking here is um, um, some wetlands crossings we want to protect the wetlands um, we did get a MDE permit um, with the great help of Chris Pajak, as Nancy mentioned, uh, to help us get through that. That was a very tedious process. I'm happy to say we got our MDE permit last week. Um, so the Maryland Department of Environment likes what we're doing. They've approved everything. We now need to build some boardwalk. As you know, the price of lumber is outrageous. Um, Friel Lumber. Friel Lumber stepped up and said, we want this to happen for you. And they're donating over probably 80% of the cost um, for us to be able to uh, to build a boardwalk. And then more is pitching in the rest. Um, as soon as I get my as soon as I get my grant request approved. Um, so uh, Dave McGill, Dave, raise your hand. Uh, I have a I have a I have a grant request pending with Dave McGill to pay for the rest of it. So a little pressure on Dave if you get a chance. Um, Paul Lombardo. Raise your hand, he's in the back there. Um, Paul has been tremendous about helping us uh, grow this community. Um, he's directed so many people to us um, that have uh, you know, shared, uh, shared interest and really helped our volunteer efforts, helped us grow the cycling team. And uh, the bike doctor today has donated a workstation that's going to go um, at the entrance of the trail. So if you get here and you have a flat tire or need to work on your bike, all the tools will be will be right here on site. And that's something I was looking to do down the road. Um, it's just, you know, money. Um, so Paul stepped up today from the Bike Doctor of Ken Island, donated that. Thank you, Paul. Um, so this is um, what I'm calling phase one of the project. Uh, everyone keeps saying that the trail's done, the trail's done. Um, surprise, surprise, commissioners, parks and recs in the audience, we're coming back. Uh, we're gonna, we got phase two kind of scoped out and laid out and we wanna try to see if we can make some arrangements to break some more ground on this property um, for a little bit more of an advanced section um, uh, this fall. So. Uh, Without further ado, I guess um, that's all I have to say. <laughs> thank, thank you, each and one of you, for showing up today. This is a tremendous community support. Thank you. That concludes our program. I just want to have one more round of applause for Steve. And as you can hear, as he talks through all the things that we've, we've engaged in with, with him, as volunteers, local community folks, businesses, it takes a lot to pull something like this off with volunteer efforts and it's a collaboration. So we have a five-year renewable agreement, as I mentioned earlier, with, uh, with more, and we're looking forward to, uh, to a lot more expansions of this system in the future. So another round of applause for uh, Steve Pringle and, and his group.
So we can, uh, I guess, cut the ribbon, take some photos, and then there's uh, going to be an optional uh, guided walkthrough or ride through on the uh, on the trail for everybody. So great, Commissioner. Come on. Um, there's plenty of scissors, so if you were involved in the project, get in there. Paul, nice try. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, Paul sits, um, is the chairman of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. He's also on the uh, pedestrian trail and, and bike path committee here in the county. So Paul is uh, well entrenched in our community. How about um, uh, Mr. Kenna? Ask the folks from Parks and Recs that, uh, come on, let's go. Yeah, there's some scissors down here. We, we trust you. We trust you, Principal Kenna. We, we trust you. All right, ready? One, two, three.